There's something about this Audi Q7 that really completes it as a package, and it's probably a lot more of a mundane thing than you might think. Let's see if this slightly newer and slightly more advanced Q7 is any better than the car it replaces. My name's Tom, and you are watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Righty then, powertrain up first, this is the 50 TDI, meaning we have a very similar diesel V6 under the hood when compared to the 2016 Audi Q7. However, this one has the wick turned up just a bit, so it now makes 286 horsepower instead of 272. Will you notice that? No, probably not, but what you will notice is the fact this has a 48 volt mild hybrid system that supposedly makes this thing a whole lot better to drive. This system aids in starting the engine as well as giving you a little push lower down in the rev band. Oh, I forgot torque. It's uh, the same as the previous car at 600 newton meters. Still quite a lot though. Anyway, let's see if this slightly fresher powertrain can put in some good numbers. Well, uh, I suppose it does weigh a bit more. It managed 6.13 seconds, which unfortunately is slower than the lower powered previous car that managed 5.87. Now that might surprise some, but when I say it weighs more, I mean it weighs a literal 100 kilos more, which is actually quite a difference. Now then, if you want to see an interior tour of the Audi Q7, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner now, and you can watch a review of one that's just a bit quicker. For now though, let's see what's so special about this one. So, the 50 TDI, is it worth getting this slightly newer powertrain over the older one? The short answer is yes, and that's for one very simple reason, and that is the mild hybrid system. Now you might think, well, it's just a 48 volt battery. How much of a difference can it really make? Well, there is and has been a major problem with Audis of the past, and that is their start-stop system. It's never been that good. But what do I mean by that? Well, it just takes too long to start the engine and get the car going. And the thing is, of course you can turn it off, but it defaults to being on every single time you start the car, and it's just kind of annoying. Thankfully, this mild hybrid system not only allows you to coast with the engine off on the motorway, but it starts the engine so much quicker than the previous car did. In fact, I can probably demonstrate it here. So if I pull up to a junction, say there is a car approaching, and I just touch throttle, engine on. It's instant. It's like the engine is already on, but sitting at zero RPM. And it makes a world of difference into how this car drives. And for me, personally, I think that was the one pretty major drawback with this generation of Q7, so now thankfully they've fixed it. The rest of the car is pretty lovely, I will say that. You know, the steering's nice and light, the air suspension is comfortable, visibility is pretty good. I can get in the right seating position, even though this is an Audi, my elbows can reach the armrests pretty easily. There is not a lot to complain about if you're using this as a little runaround. Like even the seats, you can adjust the pitch of the base, you've got this little extendable bit for your thighs, which is so posh that it's actually electronic. And you can use the switch on the side of the seat to adjust your lumbar support as well, if you're old like me. <laughs> it's just such an easy car to live with. And it's one of those cars that I kind of always forget how good it is, and I kind of do that with a lot of Audis, really. They kind of don't really wow you when you drive them that much, but fundamentally they're still very good cars. It's kind of like a Volvo that has a bit more design and drives a bit nicer, but not quite as good as a BMW X5. That's the way I'd describe it, at least. But I love this dash design. You've just got this nice big air blade thing, which air doesn't really come out of there, but it does look cool. You've got the panoramic roof that goes all the way back. 
if you know the Audi Q7 you'll know that the previous generation actually had like two panoramic roofs this one only has one but it's still absolutely massive but the main thing really is the comfort this car is all about just keeping you relaxed through a just being outright comfortable and b being visually calming that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that when they get in a car like this like the actual design of the interior calms you down even like the smell for me like each brand of car seems to have its own smell like if you get in an old Vauxhall Astra it smells quite musty <laughs> that's not just because of the owners of them but Audis always have a very neutral smell to them and I know it sounds really ridiculous but for me at least it does make quite a big difference I can see there's people in the comments going, this guy's a complete waffler. But for me at least it's true. And it's a good thing this car is comfortable and relaxing because I seem to have picked the worst day possible to do a car review. Not entirely sure what's going on, but uh, there seems to be traffic everywhere. The other thing this car has that really relaxes you is the Tour Package or Adaptive Cruise Control System. So you push a button here, pull it towards you, and said it's 20 miles an hour I don't think I'm going to be going any faster than that and it will steer for you and it will keep you a safe distance from the car in front as well and under 40 miles an hour this will actually drive itself completely without you having to touch the wheel for slightly longer than your average sort of adaptive cruise control driver assistance system before it starts to sort of bong at you and tell you to put your hands on the wheel of course above 40 miles an hour I think it gives you like 15 seconds um, before it starts bonging but on the motorway it's a fantastic system so if we ever get there today uh, hopefully I can demonstrate it anyway let's cut to a bit where we're maybe not in as much traffic now then parking this thing this is where Audis are always very good because it's pretty simple really they're just a bit of a square shape got good visibility and because it's boxy it's an easy size to judge you can see where your corners are and of course you've got a reverse camera with lines telling you where you're going to go you've got accurate parking sensors front and rear plenty of steering angle don't even need to go to full lock to get this thing into a parking space it's a good system the only thing i will say is even though this is a 2019 car the resolution isn't the best but it's night vision or not night vision mode but it's nighttime viewing is actually pretty good Right, once you're in a space, getting out, very easy. I find most of the time, actually, I can get to the first notch in the door. However, if you're in London, you do sometimes have to sort of go halfway between. Um, but yeah, I think it's just about skinny enough to get into spaces in London. I find it a little bit easier, actually, than the Mercedes GLE and BMW X5. which feels a bit tighter packaged. Right, coming out of junctions, now in the previous version, or non-facelift Q7, this would have been a nightmare unless you had start-stop off. Thankfully, in this generation of Q7 with the mild hybrid system, you give it half throttle, engine starts, and you're just immediately off. You are not waiting for anything to happen. And of course, you've got loads of torque, 600 newton meters of it. It's just a very smooth driving experience. ZF speed gearbox. It really is like the best gearbox out there, in all honesty. It just makes every car good, like even if the engine is a bit pants. Having a ZF 8-speed gearbox just like transforms it because you're just always in the power band. And you don't really get like really rough gear changes like you do with even some dual clutch systems. By the way, apologies for a bit of a dirty interior. This car has literally just come into the dealership and hasn't been prepared for sale yet. Um, so don't worry, it won't look like this <laughs> once it's fully for sale. Anyway, miles per gallon. Now on the WLTP cycle, they say this thing will do 39 mpg combined. So I'm hoping to see at least that today, because we are going to be spending most of the time on the motorway to see what it can do there. As usual, before we get on the motorway, let's get the traction off, let's get this into dynamic, get that suspension lowered, and see how this thing handles. Right then, let's use our favourites button to change us into dynamic. This will lower the air suspension, put the gearbox in its sports mode so we get shorter, sharper shifts and it will also hold on to gears for slightly longer. We have heavier steering as well. 
throttle pedal is increased in its responsiveness. So let's give it a taste. Just realized I haven't turned the traction off. We can do that later. But for now, you can tell that this air suspension keeps the car pretty flat. And engine response is lovely. The only thing I'm noticing is the gearbox hasn't been tuned as well as if it was tuned by BMW. And that does seem to be an Audi thing, especially in like the new Audi S4 diesel. In fact, I know it's a lot of diesel Audis that's be a bit slow. Like if you just plant your foot, it takes quite a while to kick down. I think with a gearbox remap, this would be very good. You're not going to buy a Q7 and do a gearbox remap, are you? <laughs> At least I don't think most owners would even know they could do that. Right, let's get ourselves into efficiency now. This will raise us up to the second lowest setting. So we're still fairly low. Um, in fact, is that the same height as comfort? No, it is the same height as comfort. I thought efficiency might be slightly lower to make us a bit more slippery. Apparently not. But yep, now we're in efficiency. Let's get ourselves onto the motorway and see what kind of MPG we can manage. Okay then. What's this big old heifer like coming onto the motorway? Well, in efficiency, Audi do make the throttle pedal quite dead, so you do have to give it a good old prod to get any power. But because we have a lot of torque, if this just downshifts one gear, actually accelerates pretty quickly still. And getting up to the national speed limit is really easy in this thing. You know, 600 newton meters just glides up to 70. But again, the only problem is, is that response. If you plant your foot, it just takes a while. That was like nearly two seconds. That's too long. It's actually quicker to just go half throttle and then slowly press on to full throttle, I find. I think Audi, if you're watching this, just tune it. Tune it a little bit so it doesn't downshift as many gears if you put your foot down. So you're going from seventh to fifth is pretty much immediate, and it means then I can accelerate. Just ends up being a bit quicker as all. Well. Anyway, once you're on the motorway, if you are equipped with the adaptive cruise control, you whack that on, get your lane assist on, and uh, yeah, pretty much just let the car drive itself in all honesty. You know, I can keep my fingers on the steering wheel, and it keeps you bang on in the centre of the lane. Even though this system is a bit older than some of the newer ones in different brands, I still find it's actually one of the best. And you can see it starts bonging at you after a few seconds. And the bong is quite loud, quite intrusive. But yeah, road noise, wind noise, both pretty much imperceivable. You know, you do get the old little jolt into the cabin um, over these little sort of strips in the road. There's that bong again. It likes bonging at you gives you a heart attack if you're tired, which I suppose is what it's supposed to do. It keeps you awake at least. But it is a fantastic system. It just makes longer journeys so much easier because you can kind of just relax a bit more, not focusing too much. Yeah, I would say seat comfort is slightly better than the BMW X5, but the ride of the newer BMW X5, the one that came out in 2019, I actually think that's a bit better than this. I think it's a bit more refined. Not that surprising. Usually BMWs are a bit harsher. If you go for like an M-like car, say, you know, like the M550 iX5, it is a bit harsher than this, but I find the regular X5 with air suspension just rides a little bit nicer, even though it's sporty still. But this is still very good. For motorway driving, I'd give this like a 9 out of 10 worth every penny if you want it just for that big long family trips absolutely awesome car to do it in. so quiet as well anyway can it match that WLTP figure then it's got the motorway and we'll find out <laughs> as usual.
usual, stuck in traffic. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> it's typical of 25. But yeah, pretty much the end of our motorway journey. We have managed 36.6 mpg, so we're not far off that claimed 39 mpg figure. And I think over a longer journey, if you drive at 70 miles an hour, you're going to get like 38 to 40 miles per gallon, which I think for a big seven seater SUV is pretty decent really. There's not many other cars out there that are going to do much better than that. So it's not going to break the bank and it means you can do like 600 miles to a tank of diesel pretty easily. One thing I really want to hammer home though is just how good this adaptive cruise control system is. So on the dash if you're below 40 miles an hour as I mentioned earlier you get this traffic jam assist thing and it will come up with a little logo of three cars next to your adaptive cruise control system and that's just telling you that you can take your hands off the wheel for a, a lot longer so I've got my hands off the wheel but I'm still touching the wheel Mr Policeman but it won't bong at me now for a very long time it's a very reassuring system as well Oh look, that MPG's gone up, we're doing 37.3 now. I still haven't put any force on the wheel. It's still driving for me. I can't actually remember how long it gives you. Um, if I find out, I will put it in the top right-hand corner there. Ooh. There you go. So it gives you about a minute. That felt like a minute, minute and a half. Which is quite a long time, actually, when you think about it. You know, this car is coming up to... Well, it's five years old, basically. Coming up to six years old, and it's still got a pretty decent adaptive cruise control system. You know, especially if you're driving in traffic like this, it just takes all the strain out of it. Anyway, it's an Audi. It's going to be comfortable, right? But what happens if you take this thing on a twisty road... Is it dynamic, as the drive mode would suggest, or is it typical Audi, understeer everywhere, and boring? Well, I suppose we should probably go find now. Let's go to B Road now. Alrighty then, in dynamic, so we're in the lower suspension setting, heavier steering, sharp and throttle response, and the car is supposed to hold on to gears for longer, but it doesn't seem to be for some reason. Anyway, let's get the traction off. Let's see what we can do in this Audi Poo 7. Front holds on nicely, coming around the corner, lift off, straightens out. Ooh, bit of understeer there, but you can neutralise it. And power is good. Lots of torque, lovely torque. Two to four thousand RPM is the sweet spot, as it is with most diesel cars. In particular, though, this Audi Q7. Oh, yes. Brakes. Can't dust them yet. Uh, but the brakes are pretty good. The initial bite is actually nicer than it is in the BMW X5 as well. In fact, the initial bite of the brakes in Audis is better than most BMWs. It's only BMWs M cars where their brakes start to get really nice in terms of their feel. In terms of the effectiveness of the brakes though, basically the same as far as I can tell. But steering is accurate, not a lot of feel, but it is accurate. Arguably better than the BMW X5 steering. And I don't know if that's just because the steering wheel's a bit thinner or not. But coming around corners like this, the body stays relatively flat, a little bit of lean, but relatively flat. And it's a pretty sharp handling car. Not very rear wheel drive bias, but the chassis itself, I think, actually feels a bit more taut than the BMW X5 chassis. Certainly better than the GLE. That's why I'm not even mentioning that. What happens if you really give it some, though? Bit of understeer, come off, straightens out. I mean, look how fast you can go around these corners. <laughs> Bit of a hop, skip and a jump. 
but she handles well. As I've said before, it's kind of like driving just an big car. It's not quite like driving a full-size SUV. It's quite strange. You notice it particularly in dynamic mode because you are just a little bit lower. It's kind of like... It's more like an Audi A6, really, in terms of how it handles. It doesn't feel like a big old SUV. Audi always do a great job with their SUVs in terms of handling, but especially the Q7 and Q8. The Q7 handles really well for a big old car. You know, 2.186 tonnes. Or 2,186 kilos. That's a lot of mass to control, and the suspension does a great job of it. Nice BMW. That was a very nice BMW. It's just this angle of the steering. It's very nice. The car likes to sit there. It feels very comfortable. Right, manual gearbox. Ride that wave of torque. You can get a proper fair old lick on in this thing. And the torque, you know, fifth gear, 2000 RPM, 50 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour. Plant your foot, comes in fairly quickly. And once it comes in, it is mighty. This thing accelerates very quickly. And then the brakes, you just. Look at that. Barely even a quarter way through the pedal there. Does a great job. So, yeah, it's not going to throw you sideways, but do you really want that in an SUV? I know you can do it in the BMW X5, but it's like, it's a 2.1 ton car, and when stuff starts to go sideways, it takes a lot longer than a lighter car does to go back into shape. So, yeah, I think, for me at least, I don't necessarily want a big old SUV to be drifting around, even though it does look quite cool. The Q7, it's predictable, safe, but it is surprisingly enjoyable to drive fast in. It's just all the control surfaces have a really satisfying feel to them. In fact, do you know what the perfect word for it is? It's that one. It's dynamic. <laughs> it does feel dynamic. It's like not sort of completely leery, but it feels nice. It's very satisfying to drive. The way I describe Audis, really, and Porsches as well, or Porsches, is kind of like they're the MacBook of the car world. Like, the actual stats might not be as good as your latest Intel laptop, but the way it feels to use is very nice. Everything's very high quality. And it's not going to knock your socks off, but it's just nice. So the Q7 is good on the wider open stuff. As usual though, we are going to go down a pothole British B road and that's where big old heavy SUVs can sometimes suffer quite badly. So let's take this big old burly thing, 2-1 now, and see if it can take it. Right then, still in dynamic, going to go for manual. I like controlling the gears myself. Second gear, wait for a bit of traffic to pass. Once you're in manual, the gearbox is actually pretty good. Ironically, it's in its automatic setting where it kind of sucks, especially at downshifting for some reason. Third gear is mighty. Look at that. I mean, the suspension controls the mass of this car sublimely, if that's a word. Brakes good. Brake nice and hard coming into a corner use the quattro system to get out of it yeah it's a proper proper machine this thing okay then can we hit 60 before the corner let's go is she gonna do it that's 50 that's 60 we just about made it nice and tight very tidy car Again, steering's pretty good. In dynamic mode, obviously it's a bit heavier. Don't really get any more feel though. Ooh, I felt the rear move then. Interesting. I'm 
another thing I want to hammer home though, the suspension is just a work of art on this car. It really is. Whilst it is a little bit fidgety, sometimes in comfort mode, once you're in dynamic, it just controls the weight of this thing so well that it just feels like a regular car to drive. It doesn't feel like a big old SUV at all. One last time then, just for good measure. Yeah, this gearbox, it needs tuning, man. This ZF8 speed can shift a lot quicker than that. It's that downshift, you're just waiting for ages. Definitely a negative for me. Coming over these bumps though. <laughs> Absolutely fly over them. As I always say, Audis are perfect eight tenths cars. Even the powertrain likes to kind of sit between two and four thousand. You can go really crazy in these, but you don't feel like you need to. I think that's why you see a lot of Audi drivers tailgating people on the motorway. They always want to go places quickly because their car is just so capable. So, as I said in the beginning of this drive, is it worth spending the extra dosh to get this over the slightly old Q7? Yes, it is. It's just that mild hybrid system. It just makes it a smoother, more luxurious driving experience. And if you're thinking of getting one of these, definitely try and find one that's got the adaptive cruise control system. It's one of the better systems I've used and it just takes the strain out of longer journeys. And when you've got big old diesel, comfy SUV, quiet on the motorway, you want something to take the strain out of driving itself and that system does all of that for you. However, is this the SUV you should buy in the first place if you want a seven seater? My personal opinion, I think no. And there is a good reason for that. It's the BMW X5. The newer BMW X5 is honestly one of the best SUVs, if not the best, I have driven on the market. You know, it does all the fun handling stuff, as well as all the comfort stuff, just as well, if not maybe a little bit better sometimes than the Audi Q7 does. So, if you want to spend even more money and get a slightly newer BMW X5, I think you should. I think the powertrains are slightly nicer as well and they tune the gearbox a little bit better. But if you want slightly better value for money, shall I say, then the Q7 is a very good choice. Just realise it's not quite as good as the BMW X5. I'm sure I'll have a load of Audi fanboys in the comments telling me that I'm wrong. And what I say to you is I used to own an Audi. I used to own a Audi A5 Quattro with the Volkswagen GTI engine, the 252 horsepower one, and that was a great car. Really loved that. I do think this has its place. At the end of the day, it might just come down to your personality and what you prefer. You know, we're all different people at the end of the day. But for me personally, I think the BMW X5 is worth just a little bit of extra cash. Just make sure you go for the newer one. The old one is definitely not better than this. <laughs> I think Audi needs to just step up their game a little bit with the Q7. Anyway, as always, if you enjoy this content, please give it a like and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale, which includes this Audi Q7, funnily enough. Um, if it's still for sale upon the release of this video, there will be a link in the description to the car. And of course, if you take my advice and you want to buy a BMW X5, then you can with the link to the generic website that will also be in the description. Anyway, my name has been Tom, as usual, and you have been watching Paragon Cars. I will see you on the next one. Cheers.